Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India project on econometric modeling so today we will discuss the heteroscedasticity problem in the last couple of lectures we have discussed the basic framework of econometric modeling and uh, uh, last couple of lectures we have discussed various aspects of uh, econometric modeling means the aspects means problem aspects so like uh, in the last two, uh, two to four lectures, we have discussed the problem of multicollinearity and problem of autocorrelation. Actually, this is uh, these problems are uh, you know uh, you know extra problems related to what we have discussed in the uh, fitness of the model, uh, where we have highlighted uh, uh, you know deeply or you can say elaborate way the a specification test or and uh, the goodness fit test so uh, having a specification test or having goodness a goodness of fit test is not sufficient to uh, say that the model is best fitted so even if the model is through specification test and through goodness uh, of fit test still it is or it cannot be considered as a best model for forecasting or policy use so the way we have highlighted a few problems already so like you know multicollinearity autocorrelations and today's discussion is all about on heterostaticity he so first of all what is heterostaticity so the way we have discussed uh, multicollinearity autocorrelation similarly we will discuss the issue of heterostaticity it's a very interesting issue and you know uh, very important for the econometric modeling okay so because uh, uh, this particular component uh, may be uh, uh, you know very helpful for cross-sectional analysis also very useful in time stage analysis we have very you know uh, very beautiful model like arch gauge etc so during that time we will discuss details about this heterocapacity issue so today we will briefly highlight the structure of heteroscedasticity okay so heteroscedasticity is basically the counterpart of homoscedasticity okay homoscedasticity is always positive for the econometric modeling if anything is attached directly attached to the homoscedasticity issue then obviously it is good for the modeling or you can say it's a very good sign for positive sign for the uh, fitness of the models but if there is any question of heteroscedasticity coming into that particular angle uh, then it is very problem for the modeling or it is a negative aspects of econometric modeling so, uh, so to transfer this heteroscedasticity is to pro homoscedasticity is the core objective of this econometric modeling. Okay, so means this particular uh, discussion. So now uh, we will highlight what is all about the heteroscedasticity uh, issue. So how we will bring to that particular components. You, you remember uh, in the last lectures I mentioned. So far as econometric modeling is concerned, there are three aspects. First aspect is the dependent classification, independent classification, and error classification. So uh, till now we we are discussing one dependent variable, several independent variables, and in the last two lectures we have discussed several uh, error terms. In fact, we start with error term one u, but to, within u we will create so many u's. Okay, so if there is any such game, uh, you know, with respect to u, then obviously. A, a, you know this type uh, this is very interesting problem or extra problem related to this econometric modeling so today uh, today this particular issue heteroscedasticity is purely on error terms like you know autocorrelation issue so uh, uh, so uh, uh, the thing is that so whether it is a bivariate model or multivariate model so heteroscedasticity is always issue because it is once you have error terms so then you will create several error terms and now uh, there is several if different modelings we can build or you can uh, you can uh, put a structure so that it can be a further analyzed or you can say you can go for uh, interesting issues etc. 
so now uh, so we will see first how it will uh, it is exactly coming this uh, heteroscedasticity issue then we will discuss with respect to its you know nature consequences and uh, its uh, causes and its uh, detection rules and also its solution rules okay so first of all what is all about this heteroscedasticity let me briefly highlight or uh, bring the issue of heteroscedasticity then we will discuss details about the heteroscedasticity so uh, let's take a case of uh, e econometric modeling for y equal to o o y equal to say uh, x beta plus u okay so this is you know generalized multivariate model multivariate econometric model by matrix approach okay this is this is mul multivariate econometric model by a you know uh, a basic econometric approach so or else you can write like this way so y equal to beta 0 beta 1 x1 uh, x1 i plus beta 2 x2 i plus continue beta k x k i ok so plus u ok u i alright so now so obviously this is u i so last class we have discussed in in fact u i so uh, it can continue like u1 u2 u3 like this way but first you start uh, 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 with this one then you first have u after that you can get uh, you can go for extension of u so now this particular model can be it can be right uh, like this way so uh, simply beta 1 uh, uh, you know beta 1 x1 so beta 2 x2 beta 1 x2 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus you can say beta k x k plus uh, u okay so uh, i can write also like this uh, removing the intercept terms uh, intercept term in fact in the uh, in the uh, uh, deep levels, it may it may have very less uh, impact on uh, dependent variable. So when you have a multivariate uh, multivariate models and uh, when there are n k number of independent variable in the system, so that time so intercept has a minor rule. In fact, if you go for you know uh, difference methods like first difference method or second difference method, so that times by default it will be removed. So so, uh, so in the long run, so the impact of intercept is not so important. The impact of you know sub coefficient is very important, like beta one, beta two, beta three, etc. So obviously we can have this type of model. So now we have y head equal to we have y head. Similarly, you can create a vector matrix. Yes, means if you transfer this particular equation into this particular format, then obviously where x equal to x one one x21 x31 up to xk1 then similarly x221 uh, then x22 then x2 x32 sorry 32 then xk k2 okay so this is xk2 so this is x12 x22 then xk k2 so similarly it will continue up to x1n x2n then uh, in fact, this is x12. Okay, this is x12, x22, then x32, like this. Way. So x1n, then x222, x2n, then x3n, then it will it will con continue xk1. So this is how the x variable is all about. So y is a, y is obviously like this. Y1, y2 up to yn, and uh, uh, beta equal to like you know beta1, beta2, beta3. So so beta will be like this. So beta will be like this. So beta one, beta two. It is in column format. So like beta two, beta up to beta n. Similarly, u one, u you, 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 you can create. Okay. So this is the basic framework of econometric modeling with respect to you know uh, multivariate model or you can say multivariate mo models by matrix approach. So now uh, I I little bit highlight here. So how how this you know error terms will be coming into the picture so briefly one, once again i will start with here x beta plus u so now this is uh, initial setup so ultimately our aim is to get y head y head equal to x beta head okay so now what is x beta head here beta head equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose x inverse x transpose y okay so this is beta head and variance of beta head is the variance of beta head uh, beta head is equal to sigma square uh, x transpose x inverse okay then sigma square equal to summation e square by a n minus k summation e square equal to summation y square minus uh, summation y a head square okay so this is how you have to proceed but you remember to to transfer this equation to this is equations 
so uh, uh, that means y uh, means particularly this first this to this equations so this is this is equation number 2 okay so means it is the uh, extension of the uh, uh, this this one okay so that means uh, y head equal to x beta head where beta head equal to this much and you know followed by uh, next step is to stress the significance of the parameter means all beta for that you need to have a variance of beta head and for that need you have to have sigma spheres and yes uh, followed by summation e square y square y l square so it is it is the chain how you have to proceed so we have discussed long back so i am not highlighting the, uh, in, in details but uh, one thing i like to clarify here uh, is that uh, so the moment uh, uh, the moment you transfer this true model to estimated models and uh, uh, by the way you are considering that it is the best models which can be used for uh, uh, which can be used for forecasting and policy use so that times so uh, uh, that times there is a small small issue you have to take care before you directly proceed to forecasting or policy use for instance you know the mom, uh, the moment you will transfer from y x beta plus u to y head equal to x beta heads so now this is the estimated equation and for that we uh, till now we have discussed about the OLS technique so uh, the by the uh, application of uh, OLS we transfer this model y h beta plus u to y head x beta heads in fact this is a simple regression model and this is you know estimated model so now uh, by the by the way once you will make difference y minus y head then you will get the error term so like so now uh, e equal to y minus uh, y heads or sometimes y minus y head uh, sometimes it can call as the u head also okay sometimes it can also call as a uh, u, u head so uh, u, u head or e equal to y minus y head so that is the difference of error term so now uh, with this basic setup uh, all these all these things are absolutely okay or you know can be uh, 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 presented here in the form of a modeling but the thing is the moment uh, since we are utilizing or using OLS to transfer this you know original equation to estimated equation and that model we are considering that is the best fitted model so obviously it must uh, go through its uh, condition conditions okay means con constant side so OLS has lots of constants some of constants are directly related to x some of the constant directly related to y some of the constant uh, constraints are uh, directly related to u and some of the constant is very generalized in nature but here uh, oh, oh, our issue is the constant on you know error term only so what are the restrictions or conditions you have to put for error term before you using this estimated model for forecasting or policy use okay so that is our agenda we have to discuss so now the moment you will transfer this equation to this equations okay so then uh, yeah, uh, we, you know we have already used OLS technique yet so you have used already OLS technique so OLS, uh, OLS technique has, is based on certain assumption which we have discussed long back but uh, right now I am just briefly bringing that issue because that issue will give you the indication of heteroscedacity so now uh, if that issue will bring the problem of heteroscedacity so we like to know what is exactly uh, the error terms and what are the uh, uh, restriction uh, we can put or we can or less have in the case of uh, uh, error terms only so uh, in fact we are not bothering about the general conditions or the condition related uh, related to uh, related to y and the condition related to x so we are very much interested for this particular heteroscedacity issue what is the condition or constraints for this error term u okay so now what are the constraints so first constraints so constraints first constraint is e of u must be equal to 0 that means mean of error term must be equal to 0 so that is uh, as usual you know uh, basic of the statistics uh, or you can say beginning of uh, univariate analysis so mean of u means it's expected value of u where we, we use probability then we are discussing about the mean issue so you know uh, when a simple variable is say x and y then obviously its deviation uh, is always equal to zero that deviation is mean in fact okay so that deviation is, is it may be with respect to true value or with respect to or with the attachment of probability value if it is uh, with respect to attachment of probability level then we use expected uh, 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 expectations so obviously the expectation will give you the mean variance etc etc 
but you know uh, like you know if you go by original issue so the main component we uh, put it in the or you can cite in the form of average so when we calculate average say uh, mean is one of the standard example so one of the standard properties of mean is that sum of the deviation of item from the arithmetic mean equal to zero like this for instance if you have x variable then you know we have a standard deviation form x x equal to x minus x bar okay so that means summation x should be exactly equal to zero so x minus x bar should be exactly equal to zero so the summation x equal to zero means summation x minus x bar equal to zero so that there is a statistical proof through which we can get to know uh, deviation of some some of the deviation of item from the arithmetic mean must be equal to zero so since it is a mathematical proof so you can verify very easily so the way we are uh, we, we are highlighting the issue with respect to a standard variable say x so similarly it can be also apply ap applicable for u because uh, because uh, ultimately what is u u is another variable here so we start with the y and x uh, let's uh, assume that this particular model is based on so uh, with the two variables only so y minus y hat let's say, say y equal to simply a uh, uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x okay so simple this much of information plus u so this is the uh, means for simplicity we transfer we are putting only say bivariate models okay so because uh, uh, the heteroscedacity problem can be discussed under a bivariate condition and can be discussed under trivariate condition and can be discussed under multivariate condition so now we are uh, whatever conditions you are there so you have to discuss the structure or you can uh, strategy con concepts are almost all um, more or less same in fact so that's why instead of going a multivariate problem it's better to uh, raise this issue in a univariate setup okay so ultimately uh, that will give you path how you have to discuss heteroscedacity in a multivariate uh, uh, angle so now uh, what is u here so like you know y and x so we will get y here so similarly you will get u so that means all together there are four variables in the system so i will highlight uh, put it in other way so let's see here so y then x then you know uh, y head then you know u okay so this is sample information so sample information says 8 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay let's say 6 only so then this is y1 this is y2 this is y3 then this is y4 this is y5 this is y6 but remember y1 y2 y3 are not variable these are all sample information only so a variable is y so y y1 is the sample for uh, one unit y2 is the uh, sample units of uh, y for second unit y3 is the sample unit of y for uh, sample 3 uh, y4 is the information of y on sample 4 like this so it will go to let's say there are six items under y okay so similarly x can be analyzed so x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and x6 so you know, initially you have this much of information only so by the process then we will get y head so obviously the way we are citing y and x so obviously y head 1 y head 2 y head 3 then y head 4 then y head 5 then y head 6 so this is how you have to derive so u equal to y minus y head okay so that means uh, it is y1 minus y1 head then y2 minus y2 head so similarly this is small uh, small y head uh, 3 then small uh, y head uh, y head 4 then small y head 5 small y head 6 that is in uh, not small okay sm y minus y head we we are calling it a so small uh, okay it's better not to say y y head y3 y4 so you can call it this one so this is u1 this is u2 then this is u3 this is u4 this is u5 u5 this is u6 okay so this is error error terminally okay so that means so y1 equal to this much y2 is this, this much y3 equal to y3 minus y3 head so this is equal to y4 minus y4 head then this is equal to y5 minus y5 head this is equal to y6 minus y6 head so this is how you will get this particular series so that means y itself is a variable here uh, sorry u itself is a uh, vari variable here so we have three different uh, four different variables so y x y head and u 
so our concern is so y x there is a relationship so how this relationship is get I means will be uh, getting affected by this uh, error observations so this is how we will get the uh, uh, errors in this particular issue so now uh, we are we are discussing what are the conditions or constants against the error term so that means so we have already discussed the constants if uh, it's first constants constraints uh, first is the e of u equal to 0 so that is mean of error term must be equal to 0 second covariance of u i u j uh, equal to 0 for i not equal to j ok and i equal to 1 to up to n ok 1 to n similarly j can be uh, 1 to up to n ok so this is how the entire structure is that that means covariance of u i equal u i u j is equal to 0. So, uh, you see here so y y x and y head then you know uh, then you have say u u head so now uh, once u head then you will get that let us say this is original u1 uh, so u then you will get y y1 head u1 heads then u2 heads so similarly you can continue you can say uk head so like you know we have discussed uh, uh, a little bit about time series last in the last class so once you have uh, y then you you will go y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y t minus 3 and so on so on so in this particular structure can be analyzed similar way so once you have u t so you can go uh, go with u t u t minus 1 u t minus 2 u t minus 3 u t minus 4 like this way or you can go with respect to ut, ut plus 1, ut plus 2, ut plus 3 like this way. Either it is a past collection or it is a present collection, uh, future collection. Okay, but right now we are discussing about the future collection. That means, so there are uh, sample observation like this, uh, you know, let us say like this, ut, ut minus 1, ut minus 2, ut minus 3 like this. So, it will continue like this. But the, remember one thing when will uh, uh, you know create a, a additional u for given u then obviously one of the problem you will face is that uh, number of sample size will get reduced because to maintain the consistency of all the variables at a time so uh, so you have to find out the appropriate log length and provided it has to be satisfied with the degrees of freedom so once uh, until unless you have that uh, then it is very problem problem for you so that means uh, what i like to say uh, the con one of the interesting condition for this uh, error correction is that covariance of u i u j equal to 0 for i not equal to j. So, in fact, this particular problem we have discussed in the last class that is nothing but the autocorrelation problem. So, autocorrelation means there is no such covariance between the error terms. Okay. So, now a uh, third assumption is that third assumption is that um, this is all uh, issue third assumption is that uh, covariance of u i u j is equal to sigma squares for i equal to j i equal to 1 to up to n j equal to 1 to up to n ok so that means covariance of u i upon u j for i equal to j means it is nothing but variance of u ok it is nothing but variance of u so variance of u must be a must be constant so that means so we have to uh, so once you have u so first you check it whether error mean of that error term is exactly equal to 0 this is step 1 so uh, if it is satisfied then you have to go to step 2 step, step 2 means you create uh, additional u t u u u so like you know u t minus 1 u t minus 2 u t minus 3 like this so that means your sample point will be uh, coming like this this is u t this is u t minus 1 this is u t minus 2 okay so if it is coming 1 2 3 4 5 6 then obviously this will be 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 5 6 then obviously this will be 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so 5 and 6 so that means you are losing here one sample you are losing here two samples and there is the addition of extra sample so this side you have to remove this side you have to remove and this side you have to re remove so that means so now the model can be fitted with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 observation you have to, uh, you have to ta take into consideration okay, before using uh, you know say second log length. So in similarly if we add another variable then you are going to lose the degree of freedom 1. 
So, that means instead of 5, then you will, you will take only 4 for uh, sample points only. So, once you add an, uh, one after another variable, then obviously means uh, with respect to lag introduction, then obviously you will, uh, you will lose sample observation. So, that is how you must be very careful how, how, how much lag length you have to consider for a particular problem. So, that means with the moment you will use the lag length, that is nothing but the indication of time series modeling. So, one of the standard uh, uh, assumption of the time series modeling is that so, uh, your sample observation should be substantially, substantially very high. So, if the sample observation is substantially very high, then obviously if you create number of use within a given setup, then it will not uh, serious problem. But if you have a very small size, a small sample size, then obviously to have more number of use is very, very difficult. So, that is why before you handling this type of problems like water coloration and atherosclerosity, so, one of the standard uh, uh, entry point is that your sample observation should be exclusively very high. If the sample observation is very low, then it is it is uh, it is very difficult to have the best fitted models and that means it is very difficult to through this autocorrelation and heteroscedacity so typically. Okay, so, that that is how you have to very careful that. Uh, uh, so, that means uh, variance of you must be here sigma square. So, it, it has to be satisfied. Then th th fourth condition is that uh, covariance of u upon x, that means it is a linkage with the independent variable. Covariance of u upon x is also equal to 0, because uh, otherwise it will automatically uh, uh, give an indication of uh, like multicollinearity problem, because what is multicollinearity? So, having linear relationship among the uh, 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 regressors, so that means u is also one type of regressor here because the uh, UEG uh, situated uh, or you can say encoded in the right hand side of the uh, of equation. So, the, the moment something is the right in the right hand side of the equation that can be considered as a independent cluster. So, obviously, so there may be some collinearity between U and X, but the model requirement is that or model uh, the systems of uh, system of modeling is that. So, whatever variables in your right side, so whatever in the independent clusters, so these variables should be independent to each other. If they are not independent to each other, then obviously there is a multicollinearity problem. First you solve that particular problem, then you have to go for other problems, okay, because it is a stepwise process. So, one problem, once you will solve, you will go to another problem. Once another problem will get solved, then you go to another problem. But in the same time, you must be very careful when you will uh, solve a second problem, the first problem which already clarified or cleared, so that can be again added to the another problem. So, to uh, so, so, so that means when you have a series of test or is a series of constraint in your front, then obviously to uh, clear all these constraints is a very difficult job. So, that, that means you have to go for very, very optimum condition or you can say perfect combi combination. Uh, where uh, everything can manage manage in a uh, typical way. Otherwise, it will it will uh, get affected the system. So, okay, so covariance of u upon x must be equal to zero. So th these are the standard assumption we are citing in the wireless technique to have the true regression true regression and to you can say estimated regressions. Okay, so that means the model which we have received through wireless technique application of wireless technique can be used or can be considered as the best after you know uh, after confirmation from the specification test and also and diagnosis test and let us assume that it is also confirmed from the autocorrelation and multicollinearity till that model cannot be uh, used for uh, uh, more uh, you can say forecasting or policy you until unless you check the heteroscedacity so because heteroscedacity is a serious problem heteroscedacity very theoretical uh, meaning is that uh, it is a heterogeneous in nature, so, but uh, uh, generally so far as a cluster analysis requirement is that objective is that care. So, the model will be perfectly okay if your sample units are very homogeneous in nature. That is how clustering analysis has a lots of utility in this uh, econometric modeling. So, you must be you must be very careful about that particular issue. <coughs> okay. So, this is this is the structure how to uh, uh, means uh, these are the conditions you have to cite before using the estimated model for you know uh, uh, goodness fit or specific test or also uh, for use of uh, forecasting or policy use. So, now uh, here the uh, game of heteroscedacity will start. 
So generally, if this is the case, there is no such problem. This is you know by definition of problem. When this is the problem of uh, autocorrelation, this is the problem of uh, uh, heteroscedasticity, and uh, this is another uh, way of representing the multicollinearity issue. So that means this particular problem is more dangerous, and this particular problem is also more dangerous. So uh, in that uh, in the time uh, this multicollinearity issue we have already discussed. And this is also we have discussed. So now this particular problem we have to highlight in a uh, broad way. Okay. So that means with a given setup, uh, given setup, oh, once you apply well stacking, you will get the estimated model. Once you get the estimated model, so you have to go for lots of tests before you oh, assume that this model or before you cite that this model is be considered as the best. So for that you have to clear through specification test, goodness fit test, then again. To solve the multicollinearity issue, to solve the autocorrelation issue, and then you will come down to heteroscedasticity issue. So once it will pass, then you have to go for uh, any other problems. Uh, but these are the standard tricks how you have to follow before you move to any other problems. Okay, directly. So now you see here. So how is that particular setup? So that means you see here. So what is heteroscedasticity issue? So out of uh, we have cited all together five different assumptions. So now, if you if you go through that five cited assumption, then one such assumption is very very a typical uh, you know integration with this particular uh, component that is heteroscedasticity issue. So that means so we have cited one of the one of the condition is that covariance of U I U J equal to uh, equal to sigma square for all I. Equal to j and i equal to one to up to n and j equal to one to up to n. Okay, so this is how we have highlighted. So now, uh, uh, now you see here. So if this is sigma square. Sigma square. You sigma square. Uh, si sigma square means uh, it is a constant. Uh, this is not sigma. It is called as a sigma square. Okay. So generally, we use sigma square. You instead of uh, writing sigma square, we can use sigma square. U. That means it is uh, the moment you will put sigma square u, it is an indication that it is a error variance. Otherwise, I can write sigma square x, sigma square v. It is a variance of uh, standardization of uh, uh, yes, sigma square x means it is a variance of x. Uh, sigma square y means variance of y. So similarly, sigma square u, it is a variance of u. So the rule is that uh, the variation should be a constant uh, 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 over the error terms. Okay. So there, there may be some variations in the sample points, but here there should be a you know constant variant vari, uh, variance. If the con variance is not constant, then obviously uh, it will go against the system of econometric modeling. That true for typically for this heteroscedasticity issue. So now, if by any chance if it is done or if it is obtained, then that means there are two questions here: yes questions and no questions. So that means this is one of the assumption. So now, if it is assumption, then by default it will turn into a hypothesis. So hypothesis that so covariance of U I U J equal to sigma uh, not equal to sigma uh, or equal to sigma square U, and uh, against the alternative hypothesis that covariance of U I upon U J is not equal to sigma square U. U obviously, sigma square U is always there. For instance, you know, if you will integrate u1 with u2, you will get sigma square. If you uh, u1 uh, uh, means u11, then, then u22 like this, where you know the clustering will be, uh, you know, in a diagonal setup like this. You know, you see here. So what is error? Uh, means uh, error variance matrix, covariance, variance covariance matrix. So you see, you you have u first, then you will create first u you call it u1. Okay. So then u2, so another variable u3, u4, uh, u5, u5. Okay. So let's say this is un. So similarly, you have here u1, u2, u3, up to you have un here. Okay. So now uh, we we like to prepare a variance covariance matrix. We like to prepare a variance covariance matrix. Okay. So this will give you indication of. That means this particular matrix will give you signal for autocorrelation problem, and it will give signal for the heteroscedasticity problem, or you can say homoscedasticity problem. Homoscedasticity is the counterpart of heteroscedasticity. So now, uh, by uh, the moment you will say variance covariance matrix, then obviously we, we we can prepare like this way. 
so it is nothing but u1 squares okay this is u1 u2 then this is u1 u3 this is u1 u4 u4 then this is u1 u5 then it will continue u1 un all right so this is first uh, first uh, component then similarly u21 u2 u1 u2 squares u2 u3 u2 u4 then u2 u5 then it will continue u2 uh, un okay similarly u3 u1 u3 u2 then u3 u2 square uh, sorry u3 u3 okay then this is u3 squares okay this is u3 squares then u3 u4 then u3 u5 then continue u3 un okay so similarly un1 un u1 un u2 then uh, then un u3 then un u4 then un u5 un squares okay so this is how the complete variance covariance matrix where there are uh, n number of error terms that means we start with a single error term say u1 then you will create several error terms u2 u3 u4 u5 up to un so now if you put a uh, uh, you know time series aspect then it will be start like this u uh, u u uh, u t u t minus 1 u t minus 2 u t minus 3 up to you can say u t minus k okay so now if you, you say k at uh, means t equal to uh, t minus uh, t minus k so the depending upon the value of k and t so the error term can be evaluated so uh, the evaluation is like this say u1 u2 up to un and this is u1 u2 up to un so now if you multiply you know vertically or horizontally then obviously you will get this particular matrix so now this particular matrix has a three different shapes there are three different shapes of this particular matrix okay uh, so like this so now uh, this uh, this u3 u3 u4 will come here only okay u3 u4 will come here only so this is the diagonal matrix you have here so that means this is the diagonal elements that means you have two different matrix so one is the uh, uh, up diagonal and uh, uh, this is on diagonal this is up diagonal this is diagonal so that means you, uh, uh, i have uh, three different setups one is the diagonal elements then up diagonal on diagonal uh, on diagonals and up diagonals so these are you know symmetric in nature for instance u1 u2 is nothing but u2 u1 so similarly if you have this much of information then automatically you transpose this and paste it here then you will get this particular matrix okay so the, so you remember here so the this side of diagonals and on diagonals are more or less uh, same so because it will give you the situation where of, for up diagonal and on diagonal then covariance of ui uj is equal to uh, is equal to means as per the conditionality it should be zero for i not equal to j okay so when uh, when u1 u2 is there then obviously i not equal to j so when u1 square is, is there then it, it is it is the case where i equal to j but the starting is the covariance of uh, ui uj so when i j are equal then you will get uh, diagonal uh, elements so when you will get uh, you, i not equal to j then either you may be in off diagonals or you may be in the on diagonal so that is depending upon the a uh, situation so now if you are here or you are here then this particular problem is called as a autocorrelation problem so the, if you are in the up diagonal and on diagonal then you you are in the uh, uh, this is autocorrelation problem and this is heteroscedasticity problem this is heteroscedasticity problem but we have not highlighted what is heteroscedasticity here but autocorrelation you can directly get to know because it is the a covariance matrix not variance matrix but you know so accurate uh, issue of autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity is that you see here but be careful one thing here uh, in fact uh, this autocorrel like you know there is lots of connection between multicollinearity and autocorrelation there is also similar um, in the similar way there is also uh, some kind of similarity in the case of autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity one of the similar in similarity is that so the problem is discussed under the condition of error terms only basically there may be some uh, it is definitely have, 
uh, has an integration with the uh, dependent variable or independent variable, but the root is the error term for both autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity. So, now after having the variance covariance matrix, so that will not give you clear cut indication of heteroscedasticity issue. To get the clear cut indication of heteroscedasticity issue, so let me highlight here what is exactly that one. So, the, the transformation matrix is like this. So, u1, u2, uh, it will u3, it will continue like un, then this side you will continue u1, u2 uh, uh, up to un. Okay. So, now this is you know, uh, this is sigma square, uh, means u1 square. So, we will call it is sigma, sigma square 1. Okay. This side we will call it sigma square 2. So, this side you will call it sigma square 3. So, it will continue, then you will get sigma square n. Okay. So, this is called as sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3 then sigma 1 n, then sigma uh, 2 1, then sigma 2 square, sigma 2 3, so it will be sigma 2 n, okay. So, sigma n 1, sigma n 2, then it is sigma n square. So, this is how the matrix all about. By default, this should be a, a unit, say sigma square, uh, this should be equal to sigma square, this should be equal to sigma square, this should be equal to sigma square, okay. Let us say unit means it, it is just like the case of uh, unit matrix when we will go for matrix algebra then it is the structure means the OLS technique condition is that the error uh, variance covariance of error, uh, mat errors vari error, uh, variance covariance of uh, error matrix must be for, uh, you know must be equal to the unit matrix okay so what is mean by unit matrix the matrix so, uh, unit matrix has a two uh, interesting properties. First thing is the uh, you know uh, elements are square in nature, means you know uh, row and column will be same, like you know 2 into 2, 3 into 3, 4 into 4, 5 into 5, n into n. So, that is the uh, that is the matrix. So, that means matrix must be square and the value of matrix must be exactly equal to 1. So, how do we get to value of in this type of matrix, that means in all diagonal elements, the value must be exactly equal to 1 and other diagonal, diagonal elements, the value must be exactly equal to 0. So, that is the representation of, you know, unit matrix and in fact, in econometrics, that is the requirement of OLS application. Means one of the standard assumption of OLS is that, so the error matrix, error, uh, error component matrix, I mean that is, that two variance covariance matrix should follow the unit matrix set. That means, so, this will be transferred uh, tra tra transfer to like this way. So, this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, uh, this, is, this is the case like this way. This is the case like this way. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is 4 into 4 matrix. Okay, this is 4 into 4 matrix. So, that means we are just considering y u1, u2, u3 and u4. Okay, we are not going up to n term. So, now as usual I have mentioned. So, this particular uh, term is 1, 1, 1 and other terms will be 0, 0, 0. That means you can connect here. So, sigma square 1 is this much, sigma 2 square is this much, sigma 3 square is this much, sigma uh, square uh, this is uh, uh, another is sigma square. Uh, 3 a sigma square 4 this is equal to sigma so this will connect to this one so okay this is how uh, the if we, this transformation this means this value of this particular matrix will be like this then it is called as a homogeneous issue it is called as a homogeneous issue or you know it is otherwise called as a uh, homoscedacity problem so means this particular if we means we are directly targeting the diagonal elements after the value of that particular matrix means uh, a uh, quantity figure of that particular matrix, not value of the matrix. Uh, value of the matrix means the value of the determinant must be exactly equal to 1. So, we are not, uh, obviously, if you will get this type of matrix, then value is always equal to 1. That is how it is called as a unit matrix. So, that means the value 1 means it is, uh, the value is the unit only. So, the, the, uh, if that is the case, then there is no such, uh, uh, you know, uh, heteroscedacity problem. But if all are not following the unit root matrix, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, singular matrix or you know uh, 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 matrix having the value is 1, so unit matrix, then obviously then there is a problem of you can say homoscedacity, so that will lead to heteroscedacity. So, that means our requirement is homoscedacity, if not homoscedacity, then obviously it is a heterogeneous, heterogeneous uh, heteroscedacity problem. So, 
So obviously hetero, hetero, the presence of heteroscedasticity is not good sign for the econometric modeling. So you have to bring the heteroscedasticity issue to homoscedasticity. You may not uh, get exactly the homoscedasticity issue, but uh, you have to be very close to homoscedasticity. That means error, version, error variance should be by default should be very, very equal for each and every sample structure. Right? So now, uh, uh, if it is 0, 0, 0, then that means this will be connect to this one, this will be connect to this one, this will be connect to this one. So like this. So uh, similarly, this one connect to this one, the, uh, then the sigma n one connect to this one, sigma n to this one, like this. So this is how the uh, you know variance covariance of matrix. So that, that means uh, the off diagonal elements and on diagonal elements for this you know variance covariance of error matrix is equal to 0, then obviously it is called as a autocorrelation problem. That means it is it will give you indication that there is no autocorrelation problem. Again similarly, uh, if the diagonal elements are giving the signal of 1, 1, 1, 1, then it is giving again signal that it is the homoscedasticity problem. That means there is no such heteroscedasticity problem here. So the moment you will get covariant, uh, uh, off diagonal, on diagonal elements are all 0, then it, it by default it give a signal that there is no autocorrelation problem. Then again if the uh, all diagonal elements are equal with respect to all sample size, then it, it will give you the green signal that there is a, a no such a, a heteroscedasticity problem. So now uh, we have a various questions here. So issue is what is all about this you know heteroscedasticity. So means with this basic basic introductions. So now we will highlight what is all about the heteroscedasticity issue. So that means we have now number of questions. Okay, what are the questions? We have number of uh, questions. First is uh, oh, what is heteroscedasticity exactly? What is heteroscedasticity? Okay. Then second, uh, how is its nature? So how is its nature? So this is the second aspect of the problem. Third, what are the causes? what are the causes fourth what are the consequences consequences okay so what are the consequences then fifth uh, uh, detection criteria okay detection detection criteria okay what are the detection criteria sixth uh, is it a problem is it a is it a serious problem is it a serious problem? That means the uh, the question is uh, the presence of heteroscedasticity is it a serious problem? So that we have to highlight. Okay. So that means automatically it will give connection to consequences. Okay. So uh, obviously the, the consequence uh, the moment you are saying consequences means what are the negative impact on the presence of heteroscedasticity? Uh, once it, if it is a, some positive impact, then there is no problem. Okay, but if it is a negative impact, then obviously you have to remove this negative impact. Okay, so is it a solution for this particular means is it a solution for the presence of heteroscedasticity problem? Seventh, the solution for heteroscedasticity. Solution for heteroscedasticity problem. So that means you remember when when you are talking about solution to the heteroscedasticity problem, then obviously by default uh, heteroscedasticity uh, you can say means it is a negative. So negative impact on econometric modeling. So you you need to have its detections. Okay. So that means uh, we need to have detection and we need to have its solutions. Okay. So now next issue is we have to uh, you have to clearly highlight what is exactly the heteroscedasticity. So that means first point is you, we mentioned what is heteroscedasticity. You see here yes. basically heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity divided into two parts. One is called as a hetero, then scedasticity. Okay, like homoscedasticity, this is homo and scedasticity. So this is heteroscedasticity, hetero and scedasticity. Hetero means it is uh, it is unequal variance. Okay, this is hetero represents unequal. Okay and equal. So, homo means it is equal, homo, homogeneous means it is equal. For instance, suppose there are uh, uh, three uh, three products are there. 
so i like to be keen on quantity so 10 10 10 that is how homogeneous uh, it, it's in a homogeneous in numbers only okay it may be different weight it may be different color it may be different size but number wise 10 10 10 so this is one type of homoscarcity issue or other else uh, like this you know it may be 10 15 20 but color wise it is same 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 okay so that means it is just like you are sending one market this 10 another market this 10, 15 and another market this 20 so but the color is the same so this is how it is can be homoscale uh, uh, you know uh, homogeneous in nature so homogeneous can be various angle and heterogeneous can be under various angles like if you put the same thing in a heterogeneous issue so that means uh, let's let's say there are th three different uh, products then this is 10 greens 10 yellow and 10 red so that means we have to pick up something two from here three from here five from here then it will go to one particular market then rest three three six seven will go to another market and the rest of the items will go to the another market that means number wise it is hetero then it is you know color wise it is hetero then you know market wise its classification is also hetero so this is how the hetero uh, means uh, heterogeneous issue is all about so uh, scarcity means it is uh, spread of error variance it is the spread of error variance it is this spread of error variance okay so a uh, heteroscedacity is a two aspect hetero uh, unequal and scedacity means spread of error variance so now if you will integrate these two then obviously it will give you the signal of you know uh, it will give you the signal of unequal 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 error variance it will give you unequal error variance that means so we need sigma square u but now it cannot be operate so it will be uh, it cannot be u it it will be like that sigma square u i so that means i 1 2 3 4 like this way so that means the structure we have created here sigma square 1 sigma square 2 sigma square, uh, sigma square 3 like this sigma square n sigma square n it is not equal not equal not equal not equal so this is how the this is how the heteroscedacity all about okay so uh, means the uh, the definition says that heteroscedacity means the spread of unequal variance in the system econometric modeling system so if the variance error variance are unequal over each and every sample points then obviously this is a serious problem for uh, econometric modeling so that has to be taken care of first before you use this model or uh, before you or you can say uh, assume that the model is the best fitted so it is used for policy use or you can say for casting use so first heteroscedacity has to be removed then you have to go uh, go for use a, a, a forecasting or policy use with this we can conclude this particular session next uh, next class we will highlight the detailed setup the causes consequence detection and its solution so with this we have to finish this lecture thank you very much have a nice day